Hello everyone, welcome to Organic 2 Lab. Uh, our first experiment deals alder reaction. This is the experiment video. So first up, what we're going to see are the uh, mass determinations for our starting materials. So here we have our mass of sulfalene and our mass of malleic anhydride. Uh, those were added to a round bottom flask, as you can see, that's being mounted. Um, uh, on this hot hot plate um, and then of course uh, xylene our solvent was added we had one milliliter of that xylene so initially what we're going to see happening here um, this is a very gentle heat that's being applied we're mostly just trying to dissolve all of the sulfur sulfalene and the malleic anhydride all right now um, Currently, we are not expecting um, any reaction necessarily to take place just yet. All right. Once we actually start refluxing, that's when we expect to see um, the formation of our uh, bubbles, if we're going to see them, our uh, sodium dioxide bubbles. And um, just to keep in mind here, this is... Uh, very toxic all right so we want to make sure that we um, do keep the sash down and you're going to see that kind of happen here um, in a little bit after uh, everything has properly dissolved in our heated solvent All right, and so now we are increasing the heat so that we can get a gentle boil or a gentle reflux. All right, and so for anyone who may um, have not known or uh, does not remember, in essence, in a reflux, what we're doing here, you're going to heat up your solution, which is going to cause it to boil. Now, if uh, we just heated... Uh, something and allowed it to boil and the vapors just went into the atmosphere right we could not collect that back so we would see the volume level of our solution decrease 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 until we were all out of uh, solution or solvent now in order to prevent this from happening that's why you can see we have uh, this condenser so you see that three hand little arm kind of grabbing something that's our condenser so you have the water running um, it's kind of a tube inside of a tube and so the outer wall of that tube is what's allowing water to circulate around and so it's going to cool any of the vapors that collect up into that condenser um, and allow them to condense back down and fall back into solution so um, if you're if you are refluxing properly and correctly, then you should not actually see um, a noticeable difference in your volume from beginning to end of a reflux. All right. Now, also with this, this does generate or it does decompose the sulfalene so that we get our um, diene, the 1,3-butadiene, um, and then as a side product, we get uh, SO2 gas. Now with that, that SO2 gas isn't going to be recondensed back down into anything. Um, it's very volatile as a gas, so uh, just having it in that condenser isn't going to cause it to like condense back down or anything. It's going to escape, All right? And so <clears throat> we're going to see that happen regardless. All right, so uh, this refluxing will continue for uh, 30 minutes, and what uh, if you kind of note? I know the I know it's not. Um, the resolution's not quality enough for you to maybe tell, but the solution right now is is actually very clear, right? It looks almost like water. Okay. Um, now, what you're going to notice towards the end of the reflux is that the whole solution is going to kind of be this yellowish color. All right. So, you know, one good indication that something has happened is anytime you notice a color change or anything going from transparently clear to transparently opaque in any form of a color. Right. With organic components involved typically we uh, if it's not a vibrant color we see um, a yellowish tint to the color
All right.
so after time lapsing for um, speed wise, um, 30 minute, approximately 30 minutes has passed with refluxing, and so you can kind of see that yellowish opaque color I was telling you about, um, very indicative of reaction having occurred. All right, we went from, because if you look at those water lines that are feeding into the condenser, you see how clear those are compared to how yellow and opaque the reaction uh, flask is. All right, now, um, as it's cooling, you can kind of see as it's cooling down, right, you can see all of the stuff starting to condense back down, all of the solution beginning to condense back down. All right, now once it is adequately cool enough to room temperature, uh, we can start recrystallization. Now, um, since uh, in this cool down process, um, we want to make sure solid doesn't reform, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to take this warm solution and we're going to add petroleum ether. Alright, we're adding approximately 5 milliliters of petroleum ether so that we can induce crystallization. Alright, and so as so added the petroleum ether, now I'm going to allow it to cool to room temperature, um, and then uh, some crystal formation is going to happen. Alright, so our product, our Diels Alder product, should begin to uh, crystallize. Alright, now that uh, it is allowed to cool to room temperature and we have crystals that are formed, um, you can't readily see uh, it. It's not very easy to see. Um, actually, crystal formation was so abundant that it's um, it actually is like taking up the entire bottom of that Erlenmeyer flask. All right, so I'm going to try and use um, some petroleum ether to try and rinse out that flask and get them out. Um, also, you can kind of see how <laughs> our our vacuum pump is uh, pumping so hard it's trying to shake right out of the fume hood. All right. All right. It's not the best at getting out of there, but it'll get. All right. For the most part, though, had to mostly scrape it out. Um, All right, so now I'm going to allow it to vacuum filter, get all the solvent out, try and get it as dry as humanly possible. You can see I'm still trying to scrape the product out of the Erlenmeyer. It's been a lot of fun. Alright, also, 
uh, trying to wash out those crystals with uh, more petroleum ether. All right, and then also to kind of help, sometimes the seal's not great on our, our Buchner funnels and flasks, so I, just apply, I was applying a little pressure to kind of help. All right, and you can kind of see this is what the solid, the dry solid looks like. There's our product. All right, um, next gonna remove that filter paper from the Buchner funnel. Um, I haven't showed you the image yet, but you're about to see an image of the mass of our filter paper, just the filter paper and the watch glass. All right, <clears throat> so record that because we're gonna have to do a subtraction to figure out the product mass. All right, and also going to allow this to dry on the hot plate. Once it was dry, now you can see here, um, this is the mass 62.5. That's the mass of the watch glass, the filter paper, and the dry product. So subtract those two numbers to get the mass. Um, it's not shown, but the melting point determination came to 95 degrees Celsius for our product. All right, use that to determine uh, how pure if the reaction was successful. All right, uh, good luck with your lab report.